Hi guys, my name is Omar and I'm a fifth year medical student, which means I have basically half a decade worth of tips as well as mistakes for you to learn from. For those of you that are joining medical school for the first time this semester, don't forget to share this video with anyone you know who's also starting medical school as well as subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram for even more medical school tips and content. Now let's get on with the video. Navigating through multiple learning tools is a huge drain on both money and time. I have spent so many hours trawling through Geeky Medics, Anki, Zero to Finals, Oski Stops, Ambos, just to name a few, just to find a succinct explanation about the pathophysiology or investigations or the management plan for a specific condition. Now, it can also be really hard to find information that's catered to your ability and your stage in medical school. Now, I remember being in second year learning about endocrinology for the first time and I'm feeling really frustrated and overwhelmed because every like teaching resource was catered towards people that were basically already fifth years or qualified doctors when I needed something catered towards abilities of a preclinical medical student. That is why I was so excited when past test got in touch with me because it is the only MLA specific multi-year learning resource that is created by medical educators. In fact, they're so confident about the quality of their content that they've even come up with a pass guarantee. Now that I've just signed up for a free trial, let's check out their website together. Now I'm really keen to check out their question banks because that is how I learn at medical school. It's how I practice fractum recall as well as application questions using spaced repetition. Now Anki is what I usually use, but it means that I spend, I can't tell you how many Many hours creating each flashcard and it usually means I don't even have time to do the flashcards I've created because I've spent so much time making them so I'm keen to check out their question banks here I've entered the past test home screen and I'm gonna go on to where it says finals UK MLA because that is what I am revising now this is something that I like to see I love that you can filter by specialty so if I'm in a pediatrics rotation I can select that but also I can select difficulty. Now this is something that so many question banks are missing because on my first day of a rotation, I'm only gonna know the basics. I'm not gonna know sort of complex management plans or like quite rare niche conditions. So I like that I can start off easy and work my way up. I also like that you can change between the ones that you've seen before, that you've answered incorrectly, correctly. You can time it as well if you, you wanna do a mini mock exam. This is something that I'm really a fan of. So let's check out the next thing, which is the MLA mock exam. Now, when I checked out the website earlier, I was really interested in this because I'm about to sit the MLA in a few months. Now, for those of you you don't know, the MLA is a completely new exam for medical students, which basically encompasses everything they've learned in the five years of being at medical school. And it's made up of something like 250 plus conditions. So I can go here to where it says UK MLA assessments. And here are two 120 minute papers, which is exactly how long I expect, expect the actual MLA exam to last. And it gives you a pass mark. So this is gonna be a fantastic revision resource. And honestly, I cannot wait to come back and use this. Now, the next thing I'm keen on trying out is that OSCE section. Uh, so I'm going to check out this section of intramuscular injections because it is a skill that I actually missed the teaching session of. And I'd like to recap before starting my next rotation. So I'm gonna to go to where it says intramuscular injection and what you get is an inbuilt geeky medics video on how to carry out an intramuscular injection which is so helpful because it stops you from having to trawl the internet through tons of resources because it's a one-stop shop for question banks oski and prescribing skills and what's great is that i can there's a section here where i can write notes so this could be really helpful if you receive tips from a teaching fellow or you have your own way of thinking about things you can write it there so you can revise from it in future now i want to have a look at their oski station section because this is what I found in the past really helpful when it comes to rising for OSCEs. So I want to see how well this resource does compared to the ones I'm used to using. Let's have a look at epilepsy. So I'm really pleased to see that it has both candidate patient and examiner instructions. The reason I'm so pleased about this is because I don't live with any medics. So it means it's really hard for my housemates to mark me at how well I'm doing when it comes to OSCE practice. So I'm glad this provides really clear instructions for them to use in order to mark me. I also like just how many stations are available this is definitely going to help me when it comes to my final exams now the last thing i'm going to check out is their prescribing 
skills assessment section. Now, the PSA is an exam that you take in your final year of medical school that determines whether you'll be able to prescribe as an F1 doctor. So if you are going to be able to prescribe as an F1 doctor, which most F1s can, you need to pass the PSA exam. Now, I haven't started revision for it, but I'm so pleased that I can also once again use pass test to practice for the PSA. It really shows that just one subscription to a single site encompasses basically everything you're gonna need throughout your five, six years of medical school. Once again, it allows you to filter by specialty within prescribing, the difficulty, familiarity, and you can time it once again to treat it like a mock exam. Let's have a look at one of the questions. And just like that, it's like you have a mini drug card and it takes you through the drug, the dosing, the route, and the signature, which is really helpful. But we're not even done yet. There's still so much more this website has to offer. Let's have a look at the, this essential revision notes section. Now, I love this section because I waste so much time going through literally five to 10 different websites, Wikipedia, YouTube videos, just to find sexic summaries of conditions. And as I said, I spend a lot of time making flashcards for each of those conditions. So for example, for delirium, which is a condition that you have to learn about in geriatrics, but really is relevant for all medical specialties, it goes through the key characteristics, the epidemiology, which is how common it is, the etiology, so what causes it, separating it by whether it's systemic or central nervous system specific, the pathophysiology, the presentation, which is really helpful because that tells you how to spot it in patients, differential diagnoses, how it is diagnosed, the management, as well as the prognosis, so how likely people are to recover quality of life and go back to their pre-morbid state, which is just incredibly helpful. And I mean, you can just see how many conditions they have for this, separated into the different specialties from cardiovascular to emergency, child health, hematology, therapeutics. Genuinely, I'm such a fan of this and I'll definitely be referring back to this resource when I'm revising each condition. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is this little spot diagnosis section. Now, the spot diagnosis section isn't the section I've actually seen on any other medical school learning tool website. And what it looks like is a couple hundred flashcards showing you CT scans, ultrasounds, x-rays in order to help you diagnose things based on the image. Now this is really useful when it comes to OSCE stations as well as to be fair your knowledge paper where they will show you an x-ray and have you diagnose what the patient has. Now this is really useful because a lot of medical students and even junior doctors including me feel really unconfident when it comes to x-rays because you don't get exposed to a huge ton of it. So this will definitely make me feel more prepared going into F1 and having to review x-rays in terms of the complete clinical picture that a patient's come in with. Now, if that's not enough for you, the past test website also comes with Professor Ellis anatomy videos, leaderboards, and a ton of early years specific medical content for you to revise from, which is exactly what I struggled to find all those years ago. Now you get a 30 day free trial, and if you love it just like I do, you can purchase the year membership, which also means you get a pass guarantee. A lot of medical students, including myself, have gotten subscriptions to four or five websites, which really amounts to a lot. So I'd say I recommend getting the website, which has all of the same resources together in one subscription. Now that we have learning and studying outside of placements watered, let's think about what we need to survive placement. Now, for those of you who don't know, placement is where at medical school, you go to local hospitals, clinics, and you spend basically the day there with the doctors, shadowing them as well as other healthcare professionals, and slowly get more freedom to take histories, examinations, present back to the team, and even some procedures such as taking bloods, cannulas, catheters. Now, if you want to know more about placement, surviving placement, and acing placement, check out the video I did here with your favorite medical YouTubers to find out more about their top tips for surviving clinical placement. Throughout the day at placement, you'll get these piles of wisdom from doctors, nurses, physiotherapists about, you know, managing a condition or how you spot it. And it can be really hard to actually keep organized of everything they're telling you as well as keep on top of the feedback they give you when you take a history or an examination. You'll also need to take notes of the cases you see throughout the day to input into your portfolio. Your portfolio is usually an online website where you 
log all the cases you've seen so that the medical school can actually check that yes you are going to placement and yes you are learning from it now what a lot of medical students do and in fact what i did is get the cheapest a6 notebook and scribble everything you learn onto those tiny pieces of paper. What would happen is at the end of the day, you check your notebook and you realize that it's all completely illegible. This is something that during placement I found very frustrating because at the end of a long term placement, I have to update my portfolio and I can't read anything I've written. It basically made the whole process a lot more long winded and also means that I forgot a lot of the valuable lessons I learned that day on placement. So in order to get around this issue, I really recommend the clinical pocket notebook from Papillaria. And at the back it says, practice makes progress, which I couldn't agree with more. Medicine is a marathon, not a sprint. And I think so often, even as a doctor, you know, you're always continually training and becoming more senior. And it's so hard to not feel insecure sometimes, to not feel overwhelmed by how much there is yet to know and learn. But just remember that every time you practice, you're making progress. Now, if we take a look at what's inside the clinical pocket notebook, this is the contents page. It is jam-packed with different essentials you need to get the most out of placement. So you have this section of things that you need to make sure to remember before, during and after placement. So things like what your clinical, so things like who your clinical supervisor is, what sign-offs you need, um, making sure that you've completed your portfolio, your reflection. And it's got the section to jot down all the different patients you see during the day. And it's got the section for patient histories that you take with these helpful prompts to remember to ask about allergies, their social history, their drug history. I really recommend this if you haven't taken many histories because it will help you learn that structure and make sure that you don't miss anything out when you're taking history and you're new to it on placement. It's also got a section for clinical skills so that you can write out what examinational procedures you did and what the feedback you got from it was so that you can keep learning, keep improving. And last but not least, it's just got free space in case there's anything you wanna jot down or write down that you've learned on placement. So I really recommend this, it's under a tenner and it will really help you stay organized and actually get something of value out of placement. Last but not least, and I know many of you will be wondering this, it is in fact a stethoscope. Now, there is a lot of debate when you first start medical school. Do I need a stethoscope? Do I not need a stethoscope? Now, you will need a stethoscope in medical school. Um, you'll need it for when you're on basically every single ward, from psych wards to vascular wards. Using a stethoscope is basically the mainstay of any examination you do. As a doctor, you'll need one. Now, they do have ones on the ward but these are kind of sometimes rare to come across and they're not that good. So my argument is if you're gonna need to get one anyway, why not have it from day one at medical school? And that means you always have one at home to practice with. The brand that everyone gets is Litman, and I really recommend this. Everyone has it for a reason. It makes a great present. I find that parents are often quite proud to get your stethoscope once you start medical school is sort of like a rite of passage if someone else is paying i recommend getting a higher quality one so i have the cardiology 4 stethoscope which just means that you hear more maybe murmurs are a bit easier to hear when you come on to that during your cardiology or general medicine rotations but if you're the one paying then honestly any stethoscope will do at the end of the day they're all designed to work something else you can get for placement are a pair of scrub shoes i'll insert a photo here mine are upstairs but they're really dirty so they're not the best example to show you guys but the reason i recommend this is because for theater you will need scrub shoes now they usually provide scrub shoes but by the time you get there all the scrub nurses all the doctors have taken your shoe size so i've literally had to do a five hour morning theater list wearing my left foot in a size five and my right foot in a size nine bear in mind i'm a size seven and if you're a guy with perhaps a bigger feet like size 11 12 they'll probably not have your size so definitely get a pair of comfortable scrub shoes they're really good professional bog standard shoe you can slip on before placement i recommend you get ones without holes so you can get them from crocs but don't get the crocs with holes because there will be blood there will be vomit, there will be urine or whatever, and you don't want it to get into your socks or on your feet. So definitely no holy crocs. If you have any other questions or want more information on what to expect in first year, then definitely check out the links in the description because I have made a ton of videos, a ton of resources out there for first years joining medical school. Why not comment below any questions that you have and I'll try my best to answer them. Now, if you enjoyed the video, definitely like, subscribe, and go to Pass Test, get the free trial, try it in your first semester of medical school and see how you like it. I guarantee you're gonna love it and it's gonna be your study buddy for the whole five, six years of medical school. You're definitely guaranteed to pass your exam. I'll see you in the next one.